Hey, Razorback fans, it's John Neighbors from the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, and uh, this is going to be the toughest podcast I've ever had to record, uh, and so bear with me on this. I have tried to record this podcast about 18 different times, and each and every time I can barely get through the intro, so hopefully this one's the one, but this is a very sad time. And a very sad day, in fact, because those of you who may not know, Arkansas lost one of their most iconic and beloved football players of all time way too early and way too soon. And Ryan Mallett. You probably remember Ryan Mallett pretty well, especially if you're a Razorback fan, that big six foot seven, 235 pound frame that could swing the football all over the field and or that number 15 one five as I like to call them and you know it's it's just devastating and I've been having a really hard time with it so again just bear with me if you don't mind because I got to get through this got to get through this um but at least at the time of the recording of this podcast the only thing we know about the tragic passing of Ryan Mallett is that he drowned at a Florida beach. We don't know the ex- st- uh, the situation. We don't know the circumstances. We just know that he drowned after being at a Florida, Florida beach and that he was 35 years old, which is about my age. In fact, me and, me and Ryan are the same age. And I just want to start off by saying, of course, all the thoughts and prayers to the Mallet family during this time. I just, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine what they're going through and how much they're hurting right now over uh, something like that. So just thoughts and prayers to the whole Mallet family, first and foremost, without question. Um, I want to talk first off about Ryan and his time in Arkansas because honestly as the quarterback during that time and during that run that he was in Fayetteville it was to me without question the most exciting and the most explosive and the most fun offense that Razorback football has ever seen like not even close Ryan was the catalyst behind that of course you had a a great pairing in a great combination of not only an incredible quarterback like Ryan, but star-studded wide receivers with Greg Childs and Jarius Wright and Joe Adams, Kobe Hamilton, uh, tight end that's over great with DJ Williams and Chris Gregg, an offensive line in front of him that was elite, protected him, and of course, uh, offensive genius and mastermind in Bobby Petrino. He was awesome. Like, you just go back and look at his highlights. He was awesome. The way that he could make throws that still to this day I haven't seen very many people do, at least in Arkansas's history. He could just, I mean, he could literally throw the ball 70 yards with just a flick of the wrist. And he came at the right opportunity at the right time at Arkansas. And it was so perfect because, you know, he grew up a Razorback fan. He grew up rooting on the Razorbacks. and. Came out of Texarkana High School, was one of the best players in the country, but decided to go to Min- uh, Michigan because of the situation of uh, you know, Mitch Mustaine and Nutt and Malzahn and all that. But after his freshman year and after the coaching change happened, he wanted to come back home, and that's exactly what he did. He came back home to Arkansas and just had a prolific type of career in just the two short years he was playing quarterback in Fayetteville. In 09 and 2010. So I've said it before on the podcast, and I think I've talked about it and even listed it that uh, Ryan Mallett, to me, is the number one quarterback ever at Arkansas. Best quarterback Arkansas has ever had. Uh, I'm not saying that just as far as you know, living in a moment. I'm saying it because I've always felt that way. When it comes to the the IQ, the the arm strength, the 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 passing system and what he was able to accomplish 
it was just incredible. I mean, he threw for over 3,000 yards. He had over 30 touchdowns. He led Arkansas to their one and only BCS bowl game. Back when that was it, like if you went to a BCS bowl game, that was next level. A lot of SEC teams never went to one of those. But you did. And the reason you did is because you had a great football team, and when it all comes down to it, you had a great quarterback in Ryan Mount. And that year in 2010 was so much fun. I mean, just the, the highlights and the moments, even in the losses. You know, that thing about that Bama game in Fayetteville in 2010, the Ronnie Wingo route, second play of the game. Loudest moment in Razorback football history inside of Razorback Stadium. Loudest moment, without question, no doubt. It's the best. Um, you think about that LSU game in Little Rock, to go to the Sugar Bowl. And uh, some of the fun moments that came from that. I mean, it's just, the list goes on and on for 2010. And, and uh, for him to, to be at Arkansas and then to get drafted into the NFL and play in the NFL for seven years, Patriots, Ravens, Texans, all of that. You know, that's something that Arkansas really hasn't had ever. Uh, maybe besides uh, Ryan Mountain, Brandon Allen, here recently at least, those are the only two quarterbacks that have actually had an extended period of time from the University of Arkansas in the NFL. But once his NFL playing days were over, he uh, moved back to Arkansas and was the head coach of Whitehall High School right here in central Arkansas. Uh, had a, a really good head on his shoulders as far as that went and looked like everything was going in the right direction and looked like he really had something building, and getting, getting his life on track for what he wanted to do and what he always wanted to do and to coach and to, to be in that position. You know, it's just, it's sad when you just think about, uh, you know, that team there in Whitehall and the, the community there in Whitehall and his players and all that. It's just, it's, it's gut-wrenching for them too because they lost their coach. They lost someone who was very important in their lives and very important in what they do. And so it's, it, it's, again, it's tough for everybody, but the people that were closest to him and the people that he impacted in such a positive way uh, those are the ones that are, that are truly uh, impacted in the worst types of ways. But that's just about his 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 game, his, 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 how he played on the field and how he handled himself uh, as a player and as a coach, which speaks for itself. But what always doesn't speak for itself is who he was personally and who he was when you know he wasn't on the football field. And, um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and try to pretend that I was best friends with Ryan Mount because I, I wasn't. Um, but I'd like to think that I knew Ryan. And me and Ryan had a lot of conversations. Um, I met him in college because, again, me and him are the same class. And he had mutual friends that I had mutual friends with. And we all met up and out. And, uh, you know, he had a ego on him, <laughs> as as everyone knew. He had a... Very big, big personality, very confident, overly confident, perhaps, but he was goofy. You know, he was just a, he was just a cool guy when I was around him, at least. I, times I met him, he didn't act like he was, you know, too big to talk to some random guy like me. He, you know, he, we talked and, you know, chit chat or whatever, and it was great. It was awesome. And of course, once he went on to accomplish great things in the NFL, we uh, didn't really talk, but then when he moved back to Arkansas, um, got to see him in action a little bit more here in the central Arkansas area and got to go to events with, with Ryan. And uh, in fact, uh, last year during our countdown to kickoff for 103.7 The Buzz, we, as a group, got to interview various players currently on the team and former players. And one of the guys that, of course, was funny, just that was just knowing them and knowing him, uh, one of the guys I got to interview was Ryan Mallett. It was Ryan Mallett, Matt Jones, and G DJ Williams, which is just so funny to me because, uh, you know, we knew, I knew DJ and I knew Ryan. Uh, again, I'm not saying I knew him well, but we knew each other and everything. And so me and Ryan talked after that for a while. And um, I saw him about two months ago, so less than two months ago. It was the last time we had a conversation. It was at the Justin Moore, uh, ch uh, uh, Arkansas, or is the ch Justin Moore Children's Hospital fundraiser that uh, he puts on each and every year in Little Rock. 
and it's an event that people showed up to and there was a concert and, you know, just a really cool thing that fundraises money to a great cause. And Ryan was there and I talked to him for a while, uh, you know, during the event, even after the event for a bit and just asked him how everything was and he was doing great. And he was, he was loving life and loving where he was at. And he was so excited about, you know, the football team and excited about where he was at and just excited to be there. Just excited to be there and he was always having a good time. But, you know, there was people that maybe didn't really see that side of Mallet very often. Like, they didn't really see that side of him. Now, you know, they saw his, his, the way he talked or the way he acted or the way uh, things that he said. Uh, some of the legends that, and stories that were passed along uh, by people that maybe heard a story that was kind of that way and then just amplified it and exaggerated. You know, that, that's all the only things that they really knew about Ryan were those things. And I know Ryan had his struggles. You know, he had uh, he had some issues that he had to work through. You know, and sometimes it's it's tough. You know, as as individuals, we all have our demons that we have to fight through. And sometimes we don't always end up on the right side of it. And sometimes it takes a little bit long. And with Ryan, uh you know, of course, I'm never going to speak for what he would have wanted or anything like that. But I know that with his struggles and with what he went through, he he really had good intentions about being being serious about getting there to where he wanted to be. Uh, just over the past few years, and I think that him being the head coach of Whitehall was the best thing for him. You know, it was great for that school and great for that community, but I thought it was the best thing for him too. You know, he had a he had a good football mind, but he also was getting to the point to where he he was in a position to where he wanted to do what he wanted to do. He was coaching. He was being involved in the game of football because that's what he knows. And he was having success with it. And he was really building building it there. And people I know were very appreciative and loved him down there. And it was so sad when he had to deal with the loss of one of his own players just earlier this year to a shooting. And, you know, he... I couldn't imagine what that was like and having to go through it, but I remember he talked to the to the press and talked to the you know local TV and everybody and talked to the people about it and was remained strong in that situation, which I don't know if all of us could do that. But the point is is that Ryan Ryan had a lot going for him. And he was uh not only a great Razorback quarterback, but just a guy who certainly seemed like he had a bright future in front of him in coaching and in helping out with kids and building that type of atmosphere and that type of culture that you would want to have in a football program. But um, it's tough. It's tough to really even wrap the head, my head around this. Uh, this has been, as far as Arkansas news goes, I can't think of a tougher tougher thing to try to talk about or try to make sense out of than this. Again, I've, I've tried recording this podcast so many times and, uh, I, well, I first heard of the news. I didn't want to believe it. I was just in denial. I didn't I was like, there's no way. There's no way. I just talked to him. I just did it. less than two months ago. I like, we've been in touch. In fact, uh, I was like, tell him to come on my show, you know, during the summertime and, or football season starts. He said, absolutely, man, just hit me up. I mean, it was just, I'm not saying that to say, like, for, you know, making it about me, but I'm just saying that because it's, it, when you have someone like him that you have that connection and, and seeing him and seeing him play and, the, and just the excitement that he always brought in. You know, when you think of Ryan Mallett, you think of the guy, the quarterback, the the big arm dude that just, devastated defenses in the SEC and led Arkansas to one of their best seasons they ever had and brought fun passing to Arkansas for the first time ever, ever. He brought a passing game with him and just didn't do it with his legs. You know, he didn't do it with his athleticism. He didn't do it with, uh, you know, just ha being surrounded by nothing but five stars and was a game manager. He did it on, on his arm and up here in his mind. So when you think about him and think about all that and just knowing that he's 
that he's no longer with us. That's tough. That's tough. But, you know, you could, people could remember him for different things. You know, there are things that happened in his life that some people would probably want to bring up or uh, make it about that. But to me, I, I want to remember the best things about Ryan and the things that brought, I think, every Razorback fan a lot of joy and excitement. You know, I want to remember him for those big plays that he had, those big moments that he had, uh, being able to not back down from anybody, not be scared of anybody or any any defense out there or anything. It's like I, That's what I'm going to remember him by. It's just that that swagger that he had and that confidence that he had and that fact that he was our guy. He'd waited, we had waited so long to have a, a big-time passer, a big-time quarterback. And we had him, and he was our guy. He wasn't there because someone paid him in a bunch of NIL money. He wasn't there because of the fact that, you know, he was forced to go there or you know, anything. He, he transferred to Arkansas because he wanted to be a Razorback. That's what I'm going to remember him at. He could have gone anywhere in the country. He was good enough to play at any school in the country and probably be the immediate starter. He chose Arkansas. He chose to come back. He didn't have to, but he did. So that's what I'm going to remember him by. I'm sure all of you are going to have your own memories to remember about Ryan and Sure, a lot of you will debate about whether or not he is the best of all time at Arkansas at the quarterback position or not. I mean, that's just what fans do at this point. But I'm I'm just really thankful that I got to, you know, go to school at the same time he was there and got to meet him and got to talk with him and got to get to know him just a little bit. I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful that he had such a love for Arkansas that after his time in the NFL was done, he moved back. He wanted to coach here in Arkansas. Any event that was going on Razor Rec related, he was going to be there. Any any time that I ever reached out to him about anything, interviews, contacts for former teammates, whatever it was, he always got back with me. He was always immediately responsive and always really cool and always just asked me about you know life in general and how everything's going. You know, that means something. There's a lot of people that don't like that. But I know I've, I've rambled on enough, and I'm sure that uh, a lot of you are tired of it. But the thing is, is that you're going to be missed, Ryan. You're going to be missed. And I know that everyone's probably getting on YouTube right now and pu- pulling up those War Machine highlight videos of all those great games that he had back in the late and early 2000s. Maybe the Cowboy go get him play, or maybe the fourth and three play where Joe Adams hits, uh, or Mount hits Joe Adams over the Honey Badger. You know, it's all those plays. People are looking up those highlights. It's because that's the impact that he had. And people remember him by going and remembering what great things he accomplished being the Arkansas Razorback quarterback, being the guy. Being one five. So I'll end it on this, folks. One of the most iconic plays in Razorback football history, at least modern history, and still one of the funniest plays and the most classic Ryan Ballot play of all time. Thanks for listening into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Whew. Rest in peace, one five. We'll miss you. 